I don't know about you, but I'm ready for 2020 to be over. Done. Finished. We're still facing a trade war with China, which never really ended. A virus that is potentially fatal and not yet fully contained even in its country of origin. And widespread protesting and even rioting. All in an election year, too. Yeah, I'm ready for 2020 to be over, but it's only June, so we have time for some roasted opinions. There's something to be said about remaining calm, especially in a crisis. Losing self-control doesn't magically resolve the crisis, nor does it make dealing with the crisis any easier. That's why phrases like, keep calm and carry on, were so popular during World War II. There are jobs that need to be done and problems which need to be solved, and freaking out is just going to slow down progress towards completing those jobs and solving those problems. But it seems that not too many people these days care in the least about remaining calm. Everywhere we look, we can see people who are screaming like their foot is on fire. People are shouting their condemnation of cops at people shouting their support of cops back at them. People are shouting about the irresponsibility of reopening the country now at people who are shouting back that we need to get back to work. People are shouting about the ridiculousness of public protests at people who are shouting about the ridiculousness of public political rallies. People are shouting about Donald Trump's total inability to be president at people who are shouting back about Joe Biden's total inability to be president. We've turned public discourse into a national screaming match in America. I've looked to other nations to see how they are handling the issues they face, and it seems that the rest of the free world is hosting their own national shouting matches. The only countries that seem not to be having national screaming matches ongoing are places where expressing one's political and social opinions is forbidden by laws enforced by armed, unsmiling police. Where will this lead, do you think? Does anyone believe that screaming at each other resolves the issue amicably in the long run? When people shout, they have a nasty tendency to stop listening. Instead of using calm, rational discussions to reach consensus on what must be done, Shouted arguments typically rely on the force of voices to win. There is no compromise in a shouting match. There is no consensus because there is no listening. These shouting matches devolve into the very thing which has been the Achilles heel of democracy for thousands of years, the tyranny of the majority. Whoever shouts the loudest wins. It doesn't matter if their position is right or wrong. It doesn't matter if their proposal is functional or dysfunctional. The only thing that matters is victory and defeat. There is, therefore, no resolution to the argument. The victors gloat and the losers sulk, and the issue will be raised again and again. Eventually, all this shouting devolves into the dumpster fire that we all see today. We have real issues which need to be addressed, but we can't address these issues effectively and find lasting solutions to them. We can all see that COVID-19 is potentially fatal. We can all see that the economy is suffering and unemployment is widespread. We can all see that there is something going on with the police, especially since significant portions of the country are afraid of the cops. We can all see that far too many people are showing far too little respect for others and their opinions. I had a discussion over a year ago with someone on Twitter about the tone people use on social media in particular. I raised the point that people are complete jackasses on social media, and the response I received was effectively, Dude, you can't take anything serious on social media. We're here for the lulls. It's not real life. My response then is my response now. Many people on social media consider their interactions there to be just as real as IRL interactions. It may have been the land of make-believe once upon a time, but no longer. People have lost their jobs because of things that happened on social media. Reputations have been destroyed. People have been trolled into suicide. On the flip side, there are more than a few people and organizations who actively pursue the sort of personal destruction seen on social media in real life. Just yesterday, I saw Domino's Pizza have to post a defensive statement because Kaylee McEnany, the White House press secretary, gave Domino's Pizza a shout out eight years ago, and Domino's thanked her for it at that time. For perspective, Ms. McEnany graduated from Georgetown University in that year and worked as a producer on The Huckabee Show. 
The attack on Domino's came out of nowhere from prominent never-Trump Republican Rick Wilson. There was no rhyme or reason behind the attack, either. Mr. Wilson hates President Trump and his supporters. The title of his first book is Everything That Trump Touches Dies. Now I ask you, do you think that sort of discourse is accomplishing anything at all? Substitute your favorite elected official into that title. Substitute your favorite politician into every social media post which follows some version of the orange man bad pattern. How would you react? I say it again. How would you react? Would you change your mind or even consider that the issues raised about your favorite politician have merit, or would you simply dismiss those arguments? But I'm right. It really doesn't matter if you are right if you're being a jackass. But these are real problems. Yes, they are. And it doesn't matter. No one is listening to you because you are being a jackass. Don't worry, though. You aren't alone. There are tens of millions of people acting like jackasses all over the world right now. And until we all stop acting like jackasses, nothing is going to change for the better. Calm down. Find another way to discuss these important issues. Use your words, not your volume, and listen to each other for once. We haven't listened to each other for years. It's time to break that habit, before those dumpster fires really do burn down the house.